Welcome back to TK Tennis and welcome back to Germany. This is the day before I'm leaving and we are now playing at our third club and you can see these courts right here. So I wanted to do this video and explain the two main reasons of what's it like to play in Germany. And you can see these courts. They're all beautiful and they're all brand new and there's a reason for that. With really high fence lines, big spaces in between each court, giant back courts, really fresh clay. This is like my Roland Garros. There are nine courts here. Actually, let me correct that. There are six courts here, but there's supposed to be another eight courts on the other side of that restaurant and that bar over there. And all right, and here's the catastrophic fact why those courts are all new. If you see this little river right here, this is called the R River. And back in 2021, this entire region was flooded out. So this river is about 15 feet below where I stand right now. And it came up a total of about 10 meters, 30 feet. The water is up to the solar panels on that house. And if you can see the vineyard in the back, from that vineyard to the other vineyard that's all the way on the other side, so about a half mile wide, anywhere between a third of a mile and a half mile wide, this was all underwater and every single one of these houses and buildings up to about the first story up to the second story was completely wiped out my mother was one of those people that lived right on the river and she was missing for three days after the floods hit and we couldn't find her we didn't know where she was but this is now four years after the floods and this entire region is still being built but most of the houses in the first floor are still completely wiped out and that's why those tennis courts are all new. And that's why there's eight other courts that are missing. Oh, one little other fun fact about this river. Look at this river. It's not even a river, it's a stream. It's no more than two to three feet deep maximum, usually about a foot deep. And what's that, 50 feet wide? About 50 feet wide. So just imagine, I know this is a tennis video, but it still, it blows my mind. Just imagine it being 10 meters higher and not just 50 feet wide. And we're not just talking about this section, we're talking about another 100 kilometers up this river towards the Netherlands, where it was like that, and it flooded out towns. And I think they lost about 60 or 70 lives only, which was amazing, and it happened in the dead of night. So what's interesting is, think of the volume of water here, and the volume of water it took to be 30 meters higher and almost a half mile wide. We're talking about 1,000 times more volume of water that came through this little stream. And apparently it's maybe a hundred year event. I think the last time it happened was sometime in the 1800s. So it was an incredible rainfall event where the water rushed down the vineyards on each side, which is basically just a funnel for a hundred kilometers up this river. So what's it like to play in Germany? Well, there are two distinct factors that make it maybe a little bit different than playing in the States. The first one is everything is essentially club tennis meaning private clubs. To my knowledge, there's very few public courts in Germany with the exception of maybe in some of the bigger cities like Munich and Hamburg. I believe there are some public courts there, but everything in Germany is pretty much a private club. But when I say a private club, I don't mean like a country club where it's really expensive with initiation fees. I think membership at these private clubs ranges anywhere between two and 500 euros for a year. And sometimes you have to pay for court time and sometimes it's all included. So that's the biggest difference. So if you wanna play tennis in Germany, you have to come to a club and each club runs it differently. For instance, this club accepts non-members where you have to create an online account and then you can pay 17 euros an hour to play in these courts. Another set of courts we went to wouldn't let non-members play whatsoever, even though the courts were completely empty. And the first courts that you may have seen me do some videos from, they're, they're also have, they have two courts that are open to non-members and the rest are for members only. So each club has their different rules. And you may think of club tennis, well, if I go to Germany, I can't play there. Well, that's not necessarily true. You just have to go to the club or call the club. Usually it's just better to go to the club because they may not pick up their phone because they're not staffed by a team of people. Usually there's one head teaching pro and maybe there's a part-time administrative staff. But I don't know what it's like in France or in Switzerland or Holland or Spain, if it's all club tennis as well. Maybe some people in the comments can tell me. Is it the same in those countries or even Italy? Or is club tennis sort of the default for what it's like to play tennis in Europe overall? Number two, what it's like to play in Germany. There's one word and that is slow. So you're of course thinking, well, you're on red clay courts. Of course it's slow, but that's not it. 
First, you're basically at sea level, which I'm used to playing at a little bit of altitude. So the ball is slower through the air. Then factor in the humidity. Germany is quite humid, a lot of moisture in the air. That slows the ball down as well. And then of course, number three, red clay courts. They are slow, but frankly, while it may not even suit my game that much, I think slow courts are great for tennis overall. It makes the bus sport a little bit easier to play for most people. They have a little bit more time after the ball bounces to hit a good shot. But also, let's talk about red clay courts themselves. So first of all, in America, in the States, we have hard true courts, gray or green clay. Let's talk about the differences quickly. Red clay is made out of crushed red brick, hence why it's red. And then there's hard true, which is made out of basalt or slate. Basalt or slate is denser, so it packs in tighter than red clay, which is not quite as dense. Also, red clay quartz are about six inches deep, where hard true quartz are about three inches deep. And because they're denser, they also play a lot harder. Sometimes hard true quartz feel like hard quartz, where it's really hard underneath with a little bit of clay on top of it, and it makes it really slippery. Red clay quartz are not like that. So of course, why do they play mostly red clay quartz in Germany or most of Europe? It's because it gets a lot more rain and they're just easy. They just hold water nicely. But hard true quartz being three inches thick actually dry faster. Red clay quartz take a little longer to dry because of the six inch base, even though they're not as dense. But other than that, I'm actually not sure why we don't have red clay in America. I would think just because slate is so widespread and basalt and in Europe, there's a lot of crushed brick, but someone in the comments, maybe you can tell me. So that's what it's like to play in Germany. If anyone has any extra thoughts, please add them to the comments. If you know more about what it's like to play in Germany or in Europe in general, how similar are other countries to Germany in terms of club tennis. So that's what it's like to play tennis in Germany. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, share, comment. If you have any questions about what it's like to play in Germany that I might be able to answer, please ask them in the comments and I will see you in the next ace. All right, one last good rally, let's go. See the water line, the water line on these houses. Oof. Yeah, I see all must. Well, up she was upstairs, so I guess she was pretty okay. And right, right below the second floor balcony. And then Unten, some whores on. This whole area flooded out.